This is our second video on exponential growth and decay, so part two. And in this video, we're going to focus on Newton's law of cooling. Now, as Newton's law of cooling says that if you take an object and you place it in cooler surroundings, meaning that you could take something maybe out of the oven and put it on a cooling rack, or you could take something at room temperature and put it inside a refrigerator, well, it cools off at a rate which is proportional to the difference in temperature. In other words, if something that's very hot and put it in at room temperature, it's going to initially cool off very quickly. In other words, the temperature will go down relatively quickly, but then as you get closer and closer to the surrounding temperature, the rate of cooling decreases. It's rather small. So the way that we can write that, if capital T represents temperature, then the rate of change in the temperature is going to be proportional to the difference between the temperature of the object and the temperature of the surroundings. That's also known as the ambient tension temperature. And in this model, we assume that the surrounding temperature essentially remains constant throughout the cooling period. So this is another uh, separable differential equation. And so I can informally collect all of the temperature terms on one side and all the time terms on another side, and then integrate both sides. I'll integrate with respect to temperature on the left and with respect to time on the right. And so the antiderivative of dt over t minus t sub s would be the natural log of the absolute value of t minus t sub s. And then the antiderivative of k would be kt plus some constant c. And remember what we did uh, before, we'll do the same thing here. I should get two constants but I'll just subtract one from each side and then combine it into a single constant. Now, the temperature of the object is, it's cooling off. So the assumption is that it's going to be greater than the ambient temperature, the temperature of the surroundings. So T minus T sub S is always positive. So we don't need the absolute value signs. The absolute value of a positive number is just a number. And then I could write this in exponential form. So that would say t minus t sub s is e to the kt plus c. And just as we saw before, it'll be useful to apply a property of exponents and write this e to the power of lowercase c times e to the power of kt. And then we'll consider e to the power of lowercase c as a constant. It is a constant. e is a constant. c is a constant. e to the power of c, we'll write that as uppercase c times e to the kt. So the temperature of the object is the temperature of the surroundings plus some constant c times e to the kt. Now, since this is cooling, K should be negative. So let's look at an example. We have a cup of water. It's at 72 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's about room temperature. It's placed in a refrigerator, a refrigerator, and that has a constant temperature of 44 degrees Fahrenheit. After half an hour, we see that the water in the cup has cooled down to 61 degrees. We'd like to know what the temperature of the water is after one hour. And then we'd like to know when will it get down to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to find exact values to these answers, and then we'll find approximations correct to three decimal places. So starting with our equation here, I know what? That the surrounding temperature in the refrigerator is 44 degrees. The initial temperature 
the temperature at time equals zero for our cup of water is 72 degrees. And so I can put those into my equation. And if I take 72 minus 44, I'm going to get 28. Notice that this constant C will always be the initial difference in the temperature. The temperature of the object initially minus the surrounding temperature. All right. So we'd like to know what will be the temperature after one hour. Well, we know that after, um, oh, before I get into that, I'll note one thing that um, as time progresses, the temperature decreases, right? Um, after some time, it's going to be, we know after half an hour, it's 61. After some time, it'll be get down to 50. And the question is, will it ever reach 44 degrees? And mathematically, our model says that no, it will never reach that degree. As T goes to infinity, the temperature gets closer and closer to 44 degrees. And realistically, eventually, it will be as close to 44 to the point where we, our thermometer or whatever else we're using to measure the temperature cannot tell the difference. So you know, after some time, it's going to look like it's 44, but our mathematical model says that it never really reaches 44 degrees, but it does approach it in the limit. So we're told then that uh, after half an hour, the temperature is 61. So let me put that information into my equation. So that says 61, that would be 44 plus 28 e to the 1 half k. And 61 minus 44 is 17, if I did that correctly. Now I still have to divide both sides by 28. I want to get the exponential part by itself. So e to raised to the 1 half k is uh, 17 over 28. Write that in log form, then 1 half k would be log of 17 over 28, or k would be twice natural log of 17 over 28, which I can use a property of logs to bring the two inside as an exponent. So k, the exact value for k, could be written as either 2 times the natural log of 17 over 28 or the natural log of the fraction 17 over 28 squared. And depending upon what I'm doing, I may want to use either one of those expressions for k. So in this part, I'm trying to determine the temperature in the cup after one hour. So uh, I may or may not want to use this uh, decimal approximation. So let me go back here and actually answer the question now. So after one hour. So then T of 1, then, is going to be 44 plus 28 E to the K T. Now, that's going to be 44 plus 28. E, what do we say the exact value of uh, K is? It's the natural log of the fraction 17 over 28 squared times T. Well, that's going to be 44 plus 28.
e to the natural log of that fraction, 17 over 28 squared raised to the power of t. Now I did that because I know that the natural log and the exponential function are inverses of each other. And so that's going to give me 44 plus 28 times 17 over 28 squared raised to the power of t. But what is t in this case? I keep writing t. I shouldn't need to write t because t is equal to 1. So this is the exact value. In fact, I can even simplify that a little bit. I can say that's 44 plus uh, 17 squared over just 28. And that does not look right. Let's find out with the calculator here. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. That winds up being then fifty four point three. To one degrees Fahrenheit. And we're asked to round to three decimal places. So there we go. That is our approximation. All right, what about part B? All right, so we want to know when will the temperature in the cup reach 50 degrees? So after an hour, it was 54.5. Three. And now, when will it reach, how much more time will it take before we get to 50 degrees? Well, I'd like to solve this equation then for T. And we have the exact value for K. So in this expression, I see I have E to the power of K. And when we saw that E to the power of K is e to the natural log of the fraction 17 over 28 squared. But since the natural log and the exponential are inverses of each other, that's just 17 over 28 squared. So now if I subtract 44 from each side, I'll get 6. So 6 equals 28 times the fraction 17 over 28 quantity squared to the power of t. Divide both sides by 28 here. Here I can't do any simplification like I did in the previous problem because I don't know the value of t. So I just have to write this as 17 over 28 to the power of 2t. I just took the product of the exponents here. Now what I'm going to do is take the log of both sides. The natural log of 3 fourteenths would be the natural log of 17 over 28 raised to the power of 2t. I'll use the property of logs to bring the 2t out in front and go ahead and solve for t. And now 
I'll take out my calculator and get my decimal approximation. So only at the very last step do I use the calculator to get that uh, approximation 1.544 hours. So after one hour, it was down to about 54, and then it took another more than a half hour to uh, get to uh, 50 degrees. And so that's our example on Newton's law of cooling. I hope you found this video useful.